I have them, Aerie cried out, holding a large black painted shipping crate above her head. Minnie Doo, the smugglers finally got me my package. Minnie Doo, for all his patience, lowered his eyelids in annoyance when Aerie called him Minnie Doo. He just preferred Doo nowadays, thanks to the humans making fun of the Minnie part of his name and his lack of height. However, when he heard Aerie mention smugglers, he shut off his gardening hose and turned around, his large blue eyes wide. Smugglers? I thought I told you not to speak to those human smugglers again. They're dangerous. Minnie Doo cried out in alarm, looking around in a panic to make sure none of the guard patrols were walking around near their hab home. Harry giggled breathily, her bright pointy teeth glinting in the glow of the large sun above their planet. Oh, come on. You want to win our first planetary cook-off, don't you? Minnie Doo grumbled in his throat, looking at the crate his mate was presenting to him. For all her faults, Minnie Doo loved Aerie with all his two hearts, and despite the fact that she was four inches taller than him, she was the most fetching Nimiki he had ever met. Nimiki were two-toed, long-footed species of the stars, known for their long horizontal ears, fully colored eyes with light-colored pupils, long and elegant forefingers, lithe bodies, and their odd tails that were long, agile, and adorned at the end with a furred tuft. They were neither part of the Cinderal Confederation nor in parlay with the humans, instead preferring to remain completely neutral in terms of galactic politics. That did not mean they didn't play nice when they needed to, only entering into deals and regulations with the Confederation if the moment required. Their home world of Zareer was much like that of the human world, except the Nimiki had long ago removed all but the required species from their world, leaving them to farm and grow their crops in peace. They were not a militant species, preferring to grow food instead, which made a lot of other species dote on them, prized for their rearing of plants. The Nimiki fed a lot of worlds and tried to keep out of the limelight as they did so. This changed when humans started using their world as an in-between for smuggling, trying to stay out of the prying eyes of the Confederation and evade the authorities. The Nimiki were still too timid to really confront the human smugglers, instead giving them a strongly worded letter that outlined their request for the humans to leave the world proper. To their surprise and delight, the human smugglers actually agreed, leaving Zareer and instead hiding out on the four orbiting moons in secret underground bases. The smugglers returned soon enough and held a human feast for the Nimiki as an apology, something they called a cookout, and the Nimiki were hooked by the premise. They had been drawn in by the good-natured and friendly banter of all the human cooks, their little cooking tournaments, and the fact that the humans gave a small trophy to the best-voted cook of the cookout. The Nimiki were enthralled at the thought of not only winning a nonviolent battle of wits and skill, but also getting a small trophy at the end of it all. Nimiki may not have been able to wage war, but they could very happily wage cooking splines and serving ladles. When the human smugglers came back to help plan this worldwide cookout, Airy had learned of a secret human food specialty that no one else was aware of and sought to be the first winner of a Zerier cookout for their region. Her secret was in the little crate she held out to her husband. Minnie Doo looked down at the crate with worried eyes, then looked up into the face of his mate. Are you sure? If it needs to be smuggled in, that usually means it has been banned, and things get banned for good reason. You worry too much. Aerie said happily, leaning down to plant a fat kiss on her husband's red forehead. Imagine the upper hand this will give us. What even are they? Minnie Doo asked as he watched Aerie quickly step over to their plant progression station, the many pots and pre-measured soil clots sitting ready. Aerie undid the crate with the code she had been given, and the digital locking pad gave out a cheerful beep. Seeds! If we get them growing fast enough, we will be able to use the berries. Berries? Are we making something sweet? Minnie Doo asked, as he had seen what Airy had bought and placed into deep storage a few days before. Then why did you buy all that meat? It was expensive, you know. Plus, everyone else seems to be aiming for something sweet. 
There's a rumor humans have a big yaka tongue. Aerie opened the crate, drumming the fingers of her hands along the edge as she looked from side to side in excitement. Oh, look at them! They look like little moons! Minidu looked past his wife's arm. His eyes narrowed at the little suspicious seeds. Their own plants produced dagger-like seeds that glowed brightly in different colors when exposed to starlight and grew into vegetables or large meaty heads of grain that were ground into powders and flowers. They were prized for their flavor, and the Nimiki were making solid trade with the humans, though the local farmers of Earth seemed to take offense that their wheat was getting beaten quite handily in the markets. The full film plant was more refined and naturally tastier than Earth wheat, which was said to taste very rustic and barbaric. Though there were planets who found the full film flower way too sweet and instead bought wheat, but they were far fewer in number. Hmm, Mary, darling, I don't know, Minidu said in a worried tone as he picked up one of the clear bags. He narrowed his eyes at it, trying to read the handwritten English letters. Nag, Nagor, Vipin, Nagor Vipin. He picked up another little bag, and the human who wrote on it appeared to write like he had been hit by a truck as a child. Red Sakira Habanero? Habanero? Oh, shush, Ari said, giving her husband another kiss on one of his long ears. This is going to win us first place for sure. Humans love these things, and they're going to be half of the judges in our area. Minidu grumbled in his throat, even as the ear kiss made him blush. Well, we are nearer to the capital. I suppose that means more humans. That's the spirit? Airy giggled out, then started scooping out more bags and pulling out the highly advanced damp tim soil pots. These pots were designed by the Nimiki for the Nimiki and were a closely guarded secret in terms of production. They sold tons of them in trade to only certain races that they approved of, but no one knew how it was they were made on the planet of Zirir. Airy began setting the pots down one by one, tapping in the little arming coats that flickered at her on her digital readouts. Minidu, my little Dreyu, could you grab the really good soil? Minidu blushed again, growling lightly in his throat as he turned and looked back at Airy. Why do you have to call me that? Because you always dance for me when I ask. Airy replied over her shoulder with a smirk, her long braided silver hair glittering in the light. Minidu stammered, his face so red he looked purple, and he swiftly turned around, opening the door to their storage bay before his mate could see his tail fur begin to fray. Airy snorted to herself and giggled. She loved how easily flustered he got, and was one of the reasons she took the vow of matehood with him in the first place. While Minidu unfluffed his tail within the storage bay and got a hold of himself, Airy got to work setting up the pots and placing in the buko grubs a little insectoid that was fantastic for helping plants grow faster. They fed off of a nutrient puck at the bottom of the damp tin pot, producing nutrient-rich soil that they deposited around the roots. And when they went through their growing stages, turned into large, fluttering insects with rather dull black wings. Despite not being pretty, they carried pollen everywhere they went, as well as the genetic makeup of the plant they were planted with. When their life cycle came to an end, they would crawl into the ground and lay eggs. The eggs would then hatch and help grow the plant that would spring forth from the body of the dead, fully grown buko insect. Airy started humming to herself when Minidu returned with the good soil packs. And she didn't let up her steady flirting. Planting and growing was a rather romantic and sensual thing in Nimiki culture, but it was kept strictly platonic on the professional level when it came to farming. The furthest any Nimiki farmer would go was perhaps flirtatious glances toward the other growers, or having to drink a little more water than usual in order to maintain productivity. At home, however, gardens were adorned with ground couches and chairs for a reason. As Airy watched Minidu work his fingers into the soil and aerate it, she gave him a curt swat on the buttocks with her tail. She then gave him another kiss on the ear when his tail tuft fluffed out and he struggled to maintain his composure. By the time they got the seeds planted and finished with their break, the sun was setting and Minidu was gulping down water in the kitchen like he had been running for miles. 
Harry just sighed out happily from the floor couch in their living room, her hair a mess and her long ears still sporting grass stains. While she lounged on the cushions, Minidu started working on dinner, even though he was a little shaky in the knees. Over the course of the following zirier weeks, Airy watched with eager, wide eyes as the earth plants began to grow, the big, broad green leaves soaking up the light from the bright sun. Airy tinkered with these little plants as they were quite new to her, and she found them fascinating. Insects tended to avoid them, but the buco grubs appeared to be energized by the plants. While she usually didn't have to, she had to replace the nutrient brick three times, and the grubs were growing quite fat and happy. This led to the plant thriving and growing quite large, and it was on the fourth zirier week that Airy finally let curiosity get the better of her. Airy plucked one of the smaller plant leaves and nibbled on it, and her long ears twitched with pleasure as her eyes went wide. Mmm, she hummed, giving the leaf another couple of chews before plucking off another one. My word, these are delicious. Are the berries already growing? Minidu called out from the back door of their home, leaning out slightly as he stirred a desert mixture in a stoneware bowl. Airy picked a few more of the smaller leaves and ran over to him, her ears bouncing and tail flicking behind her. No, the leaves! Why are you always eating leaves? Minidu said in annoyance, rolling his eyes as he kept stirring his batter. Remember when you got sick after eating the leaves from those yorpal plants? Airy, however, was not taking no for an answer going as far as to pinch the flesh of Minidu's chest so he'd cry out in anger and pain, allowing her to stuff the leaf in his mouth. He was still angry, but had to admit the leaves did have a light floral taste. The time finally came when the berries themselves began to grow, bright or dark red with a skin that caught the light in a pleasing way. Airy, of course, kept teasing Minidu that the plants obviously took after him, and kept pestering him until he blushed to the point of being purple, just so Airy could compare the berry colors to his own. By the time the berries were fully ripened, they were in a crunch for time, and Minidoo had to take up the slack of the culinary arts that Airy so dearly lacked. As he put on his apron and studied the data slate he hung on a holder, he tilted his head, his ears wiggling in curiosity. Chili. Chili? Airy, what is this? Some human delicacy, Airy said from the floor cushions, trying to figure out what the humans served with this dish. They eat it a lot at cookouts and have whole tournaments about it. I bet if we kick past the hoops, we can stun them. Minidu snorted. Ari was terrible at Penderil, a game that the Nimiki played by kicking or carrying an inflated ball along a playing field. The goal was to try and kick it through a set of two hoops that were at different heights and sizes. Minidu was, however, an expert at the sport, and Airy had come to watch him play once. Apparently, she didn't watch the game much, just watching him run around and tackle the other players. Hmm. Well, I'll give it a go, Minidu murmured, dragging his finger along the data slate and observing the ingredients. Thankfully, there are plenty of analogs. I have no idea what an onion or butter is, but I bet it would be expensive to import. Aerie's ears perked up as she heard Minidoo muttering. Hmm? Oh, just hoping her vegetables taste the same as theirs. Minidoo sighed out to her, starting to chop up a root vegetable with his square cutting blade. I think the ones on the data slate are vetted. Aerie called back switching through the channels to hopefully find one broadcasting human television. They were researched by the djinn, so I think they're accurate. They can't even get food past their masks, Minidoo muttered, pulling out another vegetable. What would they know about taste? Harry shrugged as she lounged on the ground cushions. I don't know. They say the entire species are super tasters or something. Sure, Minidoo murmured, checking the time on the data slate. This should be ready to go the morning of the tournament. Are you sure you want the meat so chunky? If they were cut smaller, it would cook faster. No, no, no! Airy said in a panic, scrambling from the cushions in a tangle of tail and limbs and running to the kitchen. We're making Texas chili! Texas? Minidoo asked, 
looking around to Aerie as he pulled out the large portions of red meat he had defrosted overnight. What in the tail's end is a Tex-Sass? A great land of food, violence, and you're really with big, long horns, Aerie said with that same glow of excitement in her eyes, something that Minidu loved about her. They are experts on chili, Minidu grumbled in his throat as he looked down at the meat in his hands. It was more efficient to cut it small, and everything would taste the same anyway. Be a good little Dreyu and just follow the recipe. Airy murmured into one of his long ears, and he quickly shimmied his shoulders to get her away from him. Hey, if you want me to cook this stuff, we don't have time for any of that. Minidu fussed, smacking Airy on the chin with his tail. Airy grinned devilishly. I don't know. It has to cook for hours. Minidu felt her hand slip underneath his apron, going for the waistband of his lounging pants, and he danced away from her, wielding the meat in front of him like a blade. No, bad. Go sit in the living room. Airy pouted playfully and swished her way back to the ground cushions. Minidu sighed out in relief and running a hand through his dusky lavender hair. Then he remembered he had been holding raw meat and quickly ran over to their washing basin to rinse the blood out before it sank in too deep. While Airy did drive by pestering on him due to her boredom, Minidu found this odd recipe quite fun to do. The steps to making the dish were rather relaxing, the softening and simmering of all the vegetables together, adding dashes of powders, pastes, and spices, and hearing the subtle sizzle of them all melding together in his large cooking vessel. Oh, right. We need the berries. Minidu said to himself, reaching over and grabbing the bowls of berries he and Airy had collected. This was going to be an extremely large batch, his vessel large enough to likely feed a small settlement, and it had been quite expensive to buy. Airy, of course, wanted the special painted one, as she thought it would wow the human judges more. Cutting up all the meat and vegetables had been a chore, regardless of how it was making the house smell, but this was one of the last steps anyway. As Minidu started chopping up the berries, his nose gave a little twinge about halfway through the bowls, and his head gave a small reflexive jerk to the side. Oh, Minidu said in aggravation, his nose giving a short sniff. Ugh, what? He cleared his throat, his eyes starting to slightly water as he kept chopping through the berries. He looked up at the recipe and started scraping the seeds into a small slot in the counter, connected to their waste disposal. But as he sniffed again, a small tear went down his cheek. <clears throat> what in the soil? Minidu grunted out and swiped his palm along his cheek. The sensation made his body stand still for a moment, and he set down his blade, quickly gathering the chunks of berry and tossing them into the vessel. The sensation grew into a fire along his flesh and wiped at his face again. Uh-oh. Huh? Airy called out from the living room, having been watching a documentary about a human tyrant that commanded great lizards in battle. I'm... Minidu said, then cried out and started scrambling for the washing basin again. I'm on fire! You're on fire? Airy screeched in confusion, running into the kitchen so quickly she slid across the decorative tile floor. How are you on fire? My face! Minidu cried out splashing water on his face and rubbing it along his eyes. My face is burning! Airy went to lunch for Minidu, then heard the cooking elements chirp. The chili! Add the flavoring stock! Minidu warbled from under the stream of water, hissing at the pain in his face. The red container! Airy flailed around the kitchen for a moment, her tail whacking against both Minidu and the cooking vessel but she found the container and poured in the massive amount of stock all at once, her muscles bulging under the weight and strain. The lid! Minidu cried out, gesturing vaguely toward the stove as he tried to open his eyes under the cool water. Stir it and get the lid on it! Airy managed to get the lid on flush, then flailed around the hab helm a little more until she found the first aid kit. It took a while, but eventually the burning sensation left, leaving Minidu cradled in Aerie's arms with bloodshot eyes and a nose that never seemed to stop running. He was rather angry, if not righteously pissed at Aerie for having grown those things in their garden, but he looked forward to destroying the plants as soon as he was able. 
Not even the forehead kissing and snuggling by Airy could cool Minidoo's temper. And when he woke up the next morning to destroy the plants, he felt a new reason to sweat. The buko grubs had all left. That's... this is impossible! Minidoo said in a horrified voice, moving the soil around in the pots to try and find the grub. They're not even close to this part of their cycle! Minidoo's heart froze in his chest. Zareer had been carefully cultivated so that every plant was edible to the livestock animals that roamed freely. Poison nor predator kept alive. If just the juice of these berries caused this on his cheeks... Oh no! Minidoo groaned out in horror, clasping his hands to his face. Infecting the planet with an alien species of plant was one thing, but if those plants could cause harm, the planetary government instilled both hard fines and banishment depending on the severity of the crime. Minidoo looked around at his hab home, the garden he had made with Airy, the plants around him, then down to the berry plants in their pots. He quickly gathered them up and shoved them down into the waste disposal, turning the dials so that it initiated an early cleanse and turned everything within to ash. If no one could find the plants, then no one could tie them to Airy. No one would know Airy was the one who smuggled them here, and Airy would not be banished. He remembered when a female Nimiki tried to go with her banished mate into the depths of space, and they wouldn't let her. It was not a punishment then, they had said. And the thought of being away from Ari made his chest feel like it had been frozen solid. No, 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 Minidu whispered, running around the garden maniacally and making sure all evidence of the berry plants was scrubbed away. By the time Ari awoke, a heavily sweating Minidu had cleansed the entire garden and their home, the only evidence being left in the chili itself. This is wonderful, a human cried out his smuggler's uniform both garish and somehow practical at the same time. Airy was beside herself, wiggling back and forth on her feet and tail lashing around as all the humans oohed and awed at Minidoo's chili. Minidoo, however, kept looking around to all the Nimiki council members who were sweating in their robes, and his clothes were all sticking to him from how nervous he was. It is delightful, but why does it hurt? One of the female Nimiki council members said, laughing while dabbing at her pale red forehead. That's the chilies, a male human smuggler said, and he held out his bowl for another helping. You added something hot in this, didn't you? Um, maybe? Airy giggled out, her hands clasped together by her waist. <laughs> it's a secret. Minidu swallowed in terror, and his tail was beginning to shake. They had been exactly last in the taste testing, and due to how happy the humans were, they had been on this grand stand for quite a long time. What was also bothering him was that none of the humans were breaking a sweat, while every Nimiki that had tried the dish were either in open pain, fanning at their mouths, or drinking anything that was creamy and within reach. My gosh, there has to be red Savina in this. It tastes so familiar, another human said taking off his cowboy hat and setting it on the judging table. I swear it has to be Red Savina. Red Savina? Minidu thought in horror. He knows what kind of pepper it is. One of the male Nimiki council members laughed, having taken a large gulp of creamy, cool drink. Must be a spice powder or extract from your planet. After all, all pepper plants are banned from transport from Earth due to the nasty incident on Dalwari. What happened on Dalwari? One of the humans asked, scraping the dregs of her bowl with a spoon she had brought with her. The male Nimiki council member gave a short laugh. They were allergic to the peppers, every member of the race. It was a space-wide emergency due to all the reactions and distress calls. Everyone thought they were under attack from how bad it was, and there were some fatalities as well. Airy, awash in her near victory, was not even paying attention to anything around her as she chatted up the humans, many of whom recognized who she was and what had been sold to her. Many do, on the other hand, felt like he was going to faint. I don't mean to call this early, but I think we have a clear winner here, the lead human smuggler said, and he took another ladle from Airy as well. I haven't had chili this good since Earth. 
It must be quite a clever and secret ingredient to make it this good. He winked at Airy, who grinned and winked back, or tried to anyway. It looked more like a painful blink, and it made all the humans laugh. Minidoo was wavering where he stood as the humans gathered him up with Airy, presenting them with a golden spatula as the award for winning the first ever Zerier cookout for their region. Those below, the losers, were glaring up at Airy and Minidoo with obvious jealousy, having been hoping their locally crafted confections would win the day. There had been grumblings about Airy and Minidoo cheating by making something the humans would obviously like, and it was not helping Minidoo's mental state. When the cookout was done, everything put away and the plans made for the next cookout the following year, Minidoo was trying to relax with Airy, who was being far more huggy and kissy than usual, even as he browsed his data slate. One thing caught his attention, and he lightly pushed Ari off of him as his eyes widened. Hmm? Ari murmured, having been going in to kiss his neck before he pushed her away. I... I don't believe it. Minidoo whispered, scrolling down the screen with his finger. Region Tevi winner was Sindra Wan. His recipe? Bacon-wrapped jalapenos. Region Arwan. Winning recipe was green chili Colorado. Region Rui. Winning recipe was... was crab gumbo. Minidoo started quickly tapping onto his data slate, rocketing around the shared information data sources to find what these words meant on Earth. He knew they were Earth recipes. He could tell just by the names. And soon, he found them with fear dawning in his soul. Uh, Airy, Minidoo mumbled, pointing to the screen. Look, they all contain those peppers. An alert flared to life on his data slate, nearly startling Minidoo's spirit out of his body. These were broadcasted by the region's emergency broadcasting relays, and he tapped it open. A Nimicky council member filled the screen, her face a dire mask. Human peppers have been found on a farm outside Region K.O., and livestock have been found dead from swollen throats and nasal passages, having accidentally consumed extra peppers when they escaped their perimeter pens. We are currently tracking where these peppers came from, but it appears they are addictive in nature to our animals, and so far, none of them have been found to not be allergic to these red, green, and sometimes yellow berries. No animals who have consumed the peppers have survived thus far, and we are afraid some of our flying species may have carried seeds into the wild. They appear to grow extremely fast when sprouting from the later stages of the buco grub, and, as the council member kept speaking, Minidoo darted his eyes to Airy. It was a very good thing you just bought a spice mixture, isn't it? Minidoo said slowly, from those smugglers. Airy pursed her lips, then looked up to the golden spatula they had hanging on the wall. Best purchase I ever made. I agree, and none of it was left over. Minidoo said quietly, turning off the data slate. All the powder was used in the chili, and the pepper packet was burned in the waste unit. Airy draped a leg over Minidoo and somehow felt both victorious and a little bit like a smuggler herself. Of course. After all, it is imperative that every Nimicky recycles. The Nimicky that was caught red-handed with the peppers was in fact banished, though he was taken in by the human smugglers so that he would be able to more easily see his family, his identity hidden quite well. The seeds, sadly, had spread far and wide and were quick to grow in the luscious Zerier soil. This nearly caused a mass extinction of all roaming livestock on the Zerier planet, the berries growing in a near manic speed and becoming quite hard to eradicate. The combined forces of the Nimicky government managed to just only preserve enough of the planet's livestock in order to try and regrow their numbers, but the days of free roaming were over. With their markets plummeting, they needed to bounce back quickly, or else their population would never be able to afford meat for the next couple of years, or other animal products that had been produced on Zerier. The Nimicky, while avid eaters and growers of plants, needed meat, and it was not looking good in the game of affording meat from anywhere else around them. There was, however, a suddenly open avenue on the black market for human peppers, 
an extremely valuable open avenue that the Jin and Carlaken had made possible. The Nimicki just so happened to know the right people who could not only source them the meat they needed, but also get their new cash crop into the hands of buyers. Oddly enough, the neighbors of Airy and Minidoo noticed that despite the slow inbound trade of meat, the two Nimicki always seemed to have more meat than anyone else, and a lot of humans often stopped by for dinner on the off days. <laughs>